Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Room. Today we are going to continue our travel uh, through the world of cult first edition. We are going to review the Legions of Darkness source book. Yes, we are. <laughs> well, we're not going to review, right? We're just going to talk uh, about it. Talk about it, yes. Um, so this is a, a very comprehensive uh, source book about the Archons, the Lictors, the Angels of Death, and a few more uh, entities um, which are called the Forgotten Deities. I will start by addressing the Archons, which are the main uh, entities responsible for the lie which, which keeps uh, humanity jailed. The Archons aren't uh, actually uh, creatures, they are concepts, principles, and uh, all their existence is tied to their citadels in Metropolis. Each one of those has a, um, a citadel in the, the original city of Metropolis. There were 10 Archons a long time ago. Uh, right now, there are only six of those left. The others were destroyed or disappeared, uh, the other four. Uh, when they, when the, the lie started, each one of the of the leaked of the archons uh, was responsible for one part of the of the world, North America, Latin and South America, Europe, Northern Asia, China, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, Africa, India, Australia. But after the the four missing ones uh, disappeared, the rest of the archons uh, started uh, fighting for the for controlling the rest of the world. So uh, there were some changes. Uh, I'm going to stop you just, sorry, I'll make a comment here. I think we talked about this on the first review. So the interesting about thing about the Archons is that they're not good or bad, right? Yes, the Archons are <laughs> difficult, <laughs> difficult to, to explain. They are, they are what they are, but <laughs> basically that they are uh, principles, that's it. They, they, each one represents uh, something. Uh, for example, let's start by Kether, the ruler. Kether the ruler is the original Archon, um, obviously created by the Demiurge. Uh, he is the, the main responsible for the captivity of humankind. And um, he may have been a part of the, of the Demiurge, in fact, uh, together with Chokma, who is the Patriarch, and Bina, who is the Matriarch. Uh, they, they, these three were the, the most important parts of the, of the deity, uh, not God, but Demiurge. Um, Kether is one of the, of the Archons who is still loyal to the Demiurge. He's, Although he, he's not, uh, well, I want to say he's not there well, nobody knows where it is, right? Yeah, he's, he's loyal to the memory of it, basically. Uh, he's uh, waiting for, for his master to return, if, if he ever returns. And um, he doesn't want to replace the Demiurge, even though he was the one who, who should replace him. So uh, this is a, a reason for a schism among the, among the, the, the other Archons. And uh, well, Kether is not going to allow any one of, the, of the other ones to take the, the Demiurge's place. And he won't do it himself either. Um, I didn't mention before, but um, even though they are principles or concepts or whatever, um, the, uh, the, the Archons, in, in Keter is one of those, uh, have envoys, which are kind of, um, well, they are people or they appear to be people, and they are their uh, manifestation in, in our own reality. So through them, they exert part of their... Um, mm -hmm strength and power yeah that was the thing i was trying to, i don't remember very well uh in the, if the archons they're, they're never really present in our world right only uh through their invoice yeah the the archons are present through the envoys and the angels of death are present through the incarnates the names uh, are different but it's basically the same the this these uh, beings appear human and they are kind of human. Some of those probably were born human. Some of those are also lictors. So 
it depends, but they are infused with the power of uh, one of those creatures uh, who are uh, controlling them from, uh, from Metropolis. So among several other envoys in our world, the most important ones for Kether are Prince Renia Xavier von Habsburg in Europe, and Prince Wang Li Pao, the successor to the imperial throne of China. Now let's move along to the matriarch, the Bina, Bina. The, the Black Madonna. She has a campaign uh, based on her name, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we may talk about that uh, in some other day. So Bina was uh, responsible uh, for the uh, an area that includes Russia, and she was weakened when the Soviet Soviet Union fall, fell. But she's still there, and she has infiltrated um, several other parts of the world, like China, Latin America, and Africa. She even tried to gain control of the United States and all Western Europe, but she she wasn't able to do it. Bina isn't uh, allied with with Qatar, of course. She, she doesn't uh, she doesn't think that the uh, the demir will return. But uh, she may support other archon if uh, some other archon tries to to take uh, the demir's place. I like the idea of Bina because of all the concept of the Black Madonna. Yes, she's a. And then she's very connected to, to the, 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 the history of the 90s. Uh, she, she, she started to, to the Soviet Union and, um, and what, uh, what replaced it after. So <clears throat> the Bina's envoy, the, or, or at least the main envoy, the one is, who is mentioned in this book, is Maria Fedorova, the mother of uh, 12 uh, very powerful men in Russia. She's the leader of a Russian mafia family, and um, she rules um, from uh, Saint Petersburg, I think. And there are twelve these sons I mentioned. They are not uh, entirely human, even in appearance. Uh, they are strange, and they they are uh, powerful creatures. Then uh, another another of the, of the most powerful uh, Harkons is Gebura, the judge. Um, this is one of those who wants to, to take the Demiurg's place. Uh, he's uh, having uh, fights with uh, several, several other um, Harkons, namely Netzach and Tiferet, which I haven't mentioned yet. Gebura is the, the judge who applies uh, justice without mercy um, and, the, and the, the principle of uh, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Mm -hmm. He is very influence, influential globally, uh, not strictly on uh, certain countries, but uh, through the legal system of several, several places. But he has a, a, present, a, a strong presence in, in the United States. Um, he has several, uh, several envoys, and two are mentioned in this book. One of those is um, Cardinal Giorgio Biotti, who is also uh, mentioned in the in the core book. And there's another one, there's another envoy, and this one comes here only, uh, Judge Samuel Arrington, who, whose base of operations is South Carolina. He is a... Uh, a judge at, on the image of uh, Gebur himself is a, a very um, strict and uh, uh, harsh. Yeah, harsh. severe. A very harsh and severe judge. Yes, uh, the, 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 this uh, these descriptions are basically plot hooks. Mm -hmm. uh, in in any envoy, when he's described, there's a, a region of operation. There's some characteristics that some servants, some people who work for the people uh, or not people, creatures, supernatural creatures sometimes. Uh, for example, in this case, um, Gebura has uh, um, 
uh, creatures uh, following following this is is envoys who are the executioners and they also uh, serve this envoys mm -hmm. but this plot hood would be more for well i don't think that uh, game master and cult it would be a good idea to put the character players in direct contact with the envoy right that will probably be too dangerous not necess not necessarily in direct contact with the envoys but um the sphere of influence of those envoys mm -hmm. yeah so there are ideas here so you, you can um you can use them to to spin a, a, a story. Speaking of spinner, it's, we have the spider in the net, which is Tiferet. Tiferet is also a very powerful Archon and also uh, planning to replace the Demiurg. Uh, she's in uh, open war with Gabura and Netzach. And she has a kind of a, uh, she's, she's kind of an ally to, to Malkut. Malkut is the, the rebel Archon who is in a certain way in the side of humanity not entirely but <laughs> it, uh, i'm gonna say at his uh from his point of view maybe from ours it depends yeah it depends so tiferet has two envoys uh one of those is described in the in the main book um the other one is uh, a woman called um yoshiko nakamura um is a this one is a japanese businesswoman uh, who is um, cooperating with the uh, malkut in tearing down the illusion <clears throat> she's a very powerful woman in in japan and um, she she owns uh, several corporations in in the area tiferet is like the a spy right or the the mother of lies something like that yeah that's it she's she's always uh, well the, the, no one knows in fact what she thinks or what are her objectives because she's very mysterious and enigmatic and everything is planned within plans then uh, we go to Netzach Netzach is uh, the, the the chief of the armies uh, the one who's also uh, always in fight against Astaroth, <laughs> which is kind of a devil, right? Um, so he's very powerful and um, he also wants to become the new Demiurg and he is fighting Gabura and Tiferet and uh, and always fighting still the the other side. So uh, not, not, uh, not necessarily Astaroth right now because he went to to find uh, Demiurg, but th there are uh, servants of Astaroth in, and the uh, Netzak is still um, fighting them. His main envoy is a general in the Pentagon. Yeah, that's 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 how, that's what he represents. War. Um, the name of the guy is Lyle P. Crowley, and he, he I think he's yeah he he spends most of his time aboard an aircraft carrier called the Reliant. Natsakh is very powerful, obviously, and uh, his envoy also, and uh, well, that's it. Uh, I don't think it's, uh, this one is not his only envoy, I think, uh, probably some someone else. Other generals and... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, warlords. Yeah, warlords, top military people. Well, I'm, I'm going to mention now uh, two who are vanished, so we don't have much to say about them. There's Hoth, the bringer of punishment. He was uh, working in cooperation with Gabura. Gabura was a judge, and, he, he, and Hoth uh, was uh, the, the executioner. Mm -hmm. That's it. And, uh, an executioner without compassion, so that's it. And then there was Yesod was never a powerful Archon. He was named the founder. He was uh, influential uh, when capitalism was raising, but uh, after that he, he, he disappeared and there was there's nothing left of him. Well, what was left, other, other uh, Archons uh, took for themselves. And we are going now to <coughs> Malkut. <coughs> we, we it's my see. favorite one. Yeah, naturally, is <laughs> most people's favorite. Yeah, the crazy one. The rebel <clears throat> is also very powerful, 
or she because it's supposed to be a woman, a female um, archon. Uh, <clears throat> she's kind of a image of the ruler who is Keter. Uh, and obviously she, she's a rebel. Um, she she was responsible for um, uh, interesting the humanity in part of it, of course, in awakening and uh, understanding um, what is beyond uh, the lie. She obviously um, uh, turned even more powerful after the disappearance of the Demir. And she's uh, identifying more and more with humanity. Mm -hmm. She has uh, several envoys. Uh, uh, one of those is Andrea Bergstrom, who has an institute uh, who mm -hmm. does res that does research, uh, strange research. Uh, basically, they are trying to um, create a superhuman beings who can see through the illusion so but this is not exactly a good thing because uh, she's doing a very uh, unpleasant experiments yeah. so basically what happens is that she's using human guinea pigs to try to develop a, uh, a way to to see through the illusion so but most people die or become yeah you know, so Malkut not really on, your, on our side no, and well, I think she, she's I in think, a, the, on the side uh, of an idea that is uh, yeah. awakening of humans. I think she's responsible for the works. <laughs> Very likely. Wokes awoke. Awoken. Exactly. Then there's Shesev, who was named the helper, and he was one of the least powerful archons before. Uh, not much to say about him. He was. Uh, he was supposed to facilitate uh, people's life, but not, not really. And then uh, Chokma, the patriarch, who was uh, in time one of the mighty ones. But when uh, when things started to, to change at the time of the Demir's disappearance, he was uh, one of the first to, to lose power and then he vanished. Do we ever get to? I, I don't think so, but I'm gonna, still going to ask. Do we get to understand what uh, happened to the these archons that are miss, uh, missing? So were they destroyed? Did they just, or it just they vanished? Uh, well, there may be clues for for uh, an explanation, but I can't remember that, and I would have to to read all the books now. <laughs> but I don't think I don't think there's an explanation. I think that they, they yeah, were, I was just curious about it. I think they left it uh, uh, open purposefully because, mm -hmm. well, it, it makes some sense that if I would read the, the whole explanation, you would understand why those ones disappeared. It has to do with what they did. So, for for example, this patriarch um, and uh, some of the others, there, there were um, changes that mm -hmm. uh, explained why they, they, they vanished. So they, they basically they lost mm -hmm. power. Yeah, and it, it, it makes sense. Maybe the archons without power don't don't make sense, right? Perhaps I'm I'm not really maybe sure. Maybe something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's probably that. Or maybe they were uh, thinking about uh, uh, bringing them back later mm -hmm. with some. Or, some I don't know. Yeah, regardless, if people want to, they can make up their own stories about it if they want to get yeah. it on their campaign. So it's That's great. It. Now let's move along to the ten angels of death who serve Astaroth. They are, as Astaroth is the, the dark uh, image of, uh, of the Demiurg, the ten angels of death are the reverse images of the, of the, the, the ten archons, which means they are uh, even worse than the other ones. <laughs> so Keter is the ruler, and then we have Taumiel, who is the unjust ruler. Uh, he was high, he's the, the high commander for, for Astaroth and he personifies despotism, which isn't that different from, uh, from Keter, but he's a little bit worse. Um, I, had, I think I had a boss that was a follower from... It's very yeah. likely. <laughs> so Tomiel's envoy is Adnan Kazur, who leads a militia in Beirut. 
this is a typical uh, Middle Eastern uh, mm -hmm. uh, despot. So that's it. You, you can uh, find several, for example, uh, Saddam Hussein or uh, I don't know, one of those. They, they are all, they were all, this, this guy probably is a mix of several real world people. Uh, now let's go to Shagidiel, the bloodstained patriarch. He was the dark shadow of Shokma, one of the last uh, one of the last archons. Uh, so he was a patriarch also, but a patriarch who personifies uh, very uh, disagreeable things like incest and uh, toxic masculinity. <laughs> Yeah, part of it is not really the the, the toxic toxic masculinity <laughs> one. There's another one for that. He's more of a pedophile. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, patron saint. So what is is uh, is uh, is envoy is some is a guy who uh, leads a uh, Russian institution where criminal young people are imprisoned somewhere mm -hmm. in Moscow. Uh, Anton Teptov, Anton Teptov, yeah, that's it. So he's a successful politician, but he owns several uh, orphanages mm -hmm. and uh, basically tortures people there. And, and kids. Yeah, my, mostly uh, children or uh, very young people. Then there's Satario, the devastating mother, who is uh, obviously the image of, uh, oh. of the Black Madonna. Yeah, Bina the Black Madonna. Uh, her envoy is a something which is, seems like a goddess, uh, but well, obviously not a goddess. <laughs> someone called Kalidurga, uh, and uh, lives and rules from a temple in India. And She's a cult leader. So. Yeah, it's a cult leader with obviously uh, powers, supernatural <laughs> powers, and. Uh, uh, there are servants and creatures uh, called blood angels serving uh, this black mother. Okay, uh, Gamishikot is the distorted image of Shesed. So Shesed, one of the missing archons, was the rescuer. Gamishikot is the false rescuer. So the, the other one wasn't really pleasant, but this one <laughs> is really unpleasant. So um, the incarnate uh, of the death angel is called Jonathan Hayward. He's an American who leads a, um, how's it called those organizations? ONG. An ONG, yeah. yeah. Uh, called him Hayward Im Emergency Aid. And obviously they aren't aiding no one. So they are sending um, poisonous food, uh, uh, clothes uh, with, with plague, yeah, with the plague with or plague. radiation or something like that, and um, so basically they pretend to be helping people, but they aren't. Um, then there's some of the one of those um, one of the mightiest um, angels of death, who is called Golab. Golab. Um, is named the torturer and he is the the opposite of Gebura. So Gebura uh, uh, is a harsh judge, as we mentioned mm -hmm. before, but uh, Golab is uh, in fact uh, a punisher just for, for the sake of, of punishing. So he's a hard torturer. <laughs> very harsher. Well, the, his, his incarnate is called Dr. Mortimer Blanco. And he leads a group of uh, doctors specialized in uh, in developing uh, torture techniques in Latin America. So basically, they uh, they are um, is a very terrifying uh, creature. This one has no human shape, no real human shape. It sometimes can appear as a man, but uh, not for long because it's very uh, twisted. So. Um, then there's a uh, strange one because his name isn't uh, doesn't sound like the others. It's Tocarini. Sounds more like an Italian. <laughs> and he is the uh, protector of death magi magicians. Uh, 
So is the dark shadow of Tifred? This one is a bit strange because it doesn't sound like. Uh, uh, it's, it's like the opposite, yeah. Yeah, it's not, not really. Why is the opposite? But then nobody knows what Tiferet really is about, so. That's true, that's true. So we, this one is um, as an influence on death magicians, of course, uh, who, who are usually people, right? So they are humans who practice magic. It's possible for humans to practice magic, obviously. So his followers are, uh, there are some creatures also, but uh, a community of people following him in, um, where is it? Jeraba, Jeraba in, uh, where is this? I can't remember, Africa, I think. Yeah, the uh, Tunisia. Yeah, I was gonna say that it was some, somewhere uh, there's other a, Africa. We, we played something that, that uh, involved him. I can't remember exactly what was it, but was I think it was one of the adventures for scenarios for um, the new cult, I think. Uh, then it was probably the one, the one about the paintings. Yeah, the paintings, yes. It involved the, the community, the, this community in, in Jaraba. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, now I remember now. Okay, now, um, Arab Serap is the following one, is one of the three mightiest of the Death Angels, and he is a, a distorted image of Netzach. So the other one is the warrior, this one is the really evil warrior. <laughs> Um, so his envoy is someone called General Juan Martinez, who was once a Cuban soldier. And uh, he is now, uh, he obviously doesn't serve Fidel Castro. Yes. He was alive at the time. Um, he's working for, uh, for evil, I think. <laughs> Now, this one is the, the next one is the, um, the toxic masculinity uh, uh. patron saint, Samael the Avenger. Samael is a distorted image of Hod, the executioner uh, of the Archons. And he, we, so the, the original is uh, already a, a sinister figure, he's already an executioner. So Samael is. Um, uh, obsessed with retaliation without uh, meaning. So his envoy is someone called Michael Chimarro. I think Michael Chimarro is supposed to be um, Michael Corleone, I think, mm. than Michael Chimarro. So he is a, a mob uh, boss, half American probably because he's, he's, called, yeah, he's, a, he's also, yeah, he's an American. He's from Los Angeles, but he's very powerful and uh, in several places, namely the United States and Italy. And uh, uh, Gamaliel represents the perverted sexuality and is a perverted image of Isod. So in this case, sexuality is uh, shown as a, uh, not as a something that creates, but something that, that destroys. Uh, Gamaliel's envoy is Le Marquis. Le Marquis is a, um, oh, is a, what is it? He's not a Marquis. Yeah, that's his name. Um, he's someone who, who turns uh, uh, people's uh, dark desires uh, into reality. So he spreads uh, sexuality as a destructive force wherever he, he goes. So he basically uh, moves on, moves along places, different places, uh, creating uh, weird events. He's a perfect kinky bastard. Yeah, that's it. And then there's Nyamoth, the, the last one, uh, the least powerful of the Death Angels. And is someone that, well, he, he represents um, and personifies uh, uh, the defiled world. So he basically uh, retreated and uh, he almost ceased to exist. He's the only uh, hmm. of, the, of the, the, the angels of darkness that, uh, that is basically uh, destroyed because yeah. he pers so he personifies apathy and uh, he basically uh, turned into himself and 
started uh, behaving in an apathetic way. So is largely uh, missing, well, not, not really, not completely missing. Uh, the angels of death are also um, very tied to their own citadels, which are in Inferno, mm -hmm. which is, a, well, a, obviously another uh, plane of existence like Metropolis and our own world. But it, it is a, well, it's a, it's an, an image of hell, it's something like that. So what else? Then uh, the book also has information about black magic, uh, the lore of that. There are some more spells here and some orders of, uh, of uh, conjurers. For example, Ordo Fratis Mortis, which is an association of physicians, uh, mostly surgeons, mm -hmm. who worship a, a small deity which is called Marabas, Lord of Pain. So basically, they <laughs> they deal in inflicting pain through magical means. Then there's Order of Aragines. This is a sect composed by cannibals, uh, high high class, high class cannibals. Mm. Like Hannibal Lecter, high cuisine. Yeah, probably, probably yes. Um, and. Uh, what else? You know, I don't know about you, but this all this uh, talk is, is starting to give me a little uh, appetite for cult <laughs> again. Yeah, it it it, uh, it does in fact. So that well, then there are more organizations described here, like the Subjectionist Church and uh, Sangre Negra, and then some more information about, for example, uh, some other. Um, types of creatures that exist in the borderlands of humanity, of, uh, of reality, I mean, not humanity. Um, namely, the Lorelei, who are humans who feed from the life force of other people, it's a kind of uh, vampires, but not mm -hmm. uh, exactly vampires. They are, well, they, they, they don't suck blood. They suck energy or yeah. life. That's it, uh, through magic, magical means. And um, it's an interesting cr creature, this one. Then there are the jackals. The jackals are mentioned, well, mm -hmm. the, the Lorelei probably also, but the jackals are uh, among the central figures in uh, one of the, um, the scenarios. Yeah, the fallen angels. Yeah, the fallen right. angels. We'll talk about that when I cover the, the fallen angels. So the jackals are kind of, uh, what, what, well, they are mass murderers and psychopaths, but they look like uh, hobos. Airy ovos, so they, they live outside uh, regular society. There's also something that I never I never gave it much thought, but a lot of people seem to be interested in it. It's Gaia the Living Earth. That is a mm -hmm. representation of nature. This is the, the natural side of uh, of the of the delusion and the and the well that's Gaia it's, it's an, another, yes. another aspect of uh, another uh, place uh, outside of our and it reality. makes sense because that was very in vogue in the in the 90s well, yeah, it still is, but in the 90s all that uh yeah, weaker that's stuff was very uh, very yeah, probably at the time probably because of that but i, I never uh, gave it much thought no, never use it but i think there are many people i think there was a one of those um, fan-made uh, source books that uh, developed this idea because I don't, I don't, I can't remember if there was something more about Gaia, except in this book. I don't think so. I think it's uh, the only mention is about three pages in this book, so not much. And there are a few more uh, creatures and organizations here. I, I covered the most important. So this is a uh, let me see, 175 page book, uh, but it's cramped in the information. It's a, uh, it's really. Uh, useful there are many ideas here not just even the idea here is not that you're going to use the archons of or the angels mm -hmm. of death and throw them to the to the characters because they would uh, certainly uh, be killed instantaneously the idea is to use this this uh, information to create mm -hmm. situations where the characters that are uh, probably facing the, the Archon's servants or lictors, 
And if the game master has, and the players, the group has an appetite for a specific team or a specific place, so it's good to see what is going on on that. Uh, what is the archon and the angel of uh, of that that represents that? Yeah. In what area of the world do yeah. they do they exist? It does help to bring some context. It does. It does. It does help. There, there, there are many things here that can uh, help uh, the game master. Uh, develop a uh, large uh, scale scenario some with the well and you you can even think about the idea of uh, not pitting uh, the characters against uh, an archon but perhaps against some of the lesser servants and probably die fighting but still well it, 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 yeah, it could be, be the fi could be the final boss right yeah well, that's exactly. it exactly something like that so okay uh, this one is covered already so uh, the next one will probably be Metropolis because it's uh, the other source book, the relevant source book, big one also, with lots of information. And but maybe that one is I'm not sure if uh, if it will take that long because it, there's lots of information there, but uh, it's not as interesting to to talk about mm -hmm. because it's mostly parts of Metropolis being described. It's interesting to read, but uh, not that. Uh, that's interesting to talk about it. So I'll maybe uh, do something else that that uh, when we talk about it, probably. Yeah, I'll do something shorter. <laughs> or do something shorter, yes. OK, that's enough for today. So thank you for, for joining us, and uh, see you next time. See you next time.